solutions should you choose to do so. Okay, um, we have been doing optics for quite some time. Now, a number of you have been asking questions to me privately, like how will I go about teaching this in my, in my class? Where do I get all this fancy apparatus? I mean, you've got lenses and things like that in your room. I want to point out that there are a large number of common everyday optical elements and situations. This has got to be one of my favorites. Uh, believe it or not, physicists lie awake at night thinking of tricks like this. You can do the magnified upside down eyeballs trick. <laughs> no, really. I get paid for this. Anyway, um, just a clear bottle is an optical element. It's an optically active element, and you can actually use it to focus light into a bright spot. For instance, there's a bright band right now. Focus here. And you can actually see some things like this is cylindrically symmetrical, so it distorts the image into a line. The focal point is not a point, it's a focal line with this object. But you can do optics with spheres, goldfish bowls, our lenses, um, our, our symmetrically spherical lenses. Bottles are cylindrical lenses. Magnifying glasses. Odds are if you're a teacher, you will have a set of magnifying glasses, and you can explore the optics of the lens with just a magnifying glass. Yeah, so these are some everyday optical um, elements that we, we run into all the time. So the, there are lots of, there's lots of optics that you can go out there and do uh, very quickly. That includes things like ordinary plastic cups, pencils in the cup, or a straw in the cup looking at what's happening at the interface, how the image seems to jog off to one side. Today you'll be using these blocks which have been deliberately built for the particular activity that we're going to be working on, which is 4-4 in your manuals. Okay, so we will actually do that. However, I do something very similar with um, grade school students just using an ordinary transparent plastic cup and a pencil in it. I'll show you a web page later on that shows some students at a local elementary school where Kathleen here went out and um, actually did this as an activity with a bunch of, I believe, grade fours. Okay, so fours and fives. So there's lots of optics that can be done with everyday objects, and we'll, in fact, bring a picture of that up on the overhead screen. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to start out with today is, you've already had some time to look at acrylic blocks in the lab and play with prisms a little bit. We've played with some of these, but what we're going to do today is we're going to analyze this very simple block. Basically, you have an acrylic block, you have a pencil or a pen, you're going to hold one behind the other, and you're going to analyze the phenomenon, try and figure out what's going on. Okay, so you have that apparatus. Um, if you haven't picked up a block, there are more acrylic blocks up front here. Okay, so if you haven't picked one up, I encourage you to uh, get one. You should be working in groups of two or three, and I would like you to complete that activity, and then we will discuss what's going on. Please and thank you. What they're talking about? You can see it through the glass. If you hold the thing at an angle, you can see, clearly see. Okay, to clearly see this, you just hold them like that and then tilt the block. And you'll see the image apparently move as you rotate the block back and forth. You can see what's... So everyone is achieving the effect, I hope. If you haven't seen this... Yeah, you can do it that way too. But um, it's not as pronounced as... Incidentally, in the White House, they have very thick glass windows. <laughs> um, here, if you look at this one here, if you look in the block, you see how the, the position is apparently changing? That's what you're supposed to see. That's the most pronounced. You can get it a little bit by looking at it this way, but you get the best effect looking edge on. You've seen this? Good. <laughs> Well, the line is like the center point. Okay, like, 
exactly that. Like it's bended, 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 bending, and it's not like perfectly symmetrical. Like in the center, it's like towards the left. Yeah. It's not in the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying, like, you move it to the left. You can see, like, it's going straight down. And sometimes, like, over here, it's all, like, you're so Yeah. 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 I just threw a picture up on the um, on the front screen here. This is actually a um, class of grade four is trying to analyze the phenomenon, just trying to observe what's going on, make up some hypotheses. And basically, what they did is they looked at this. They all had glasses of water, and they dropped a pencil in and tried to explain what's going on there, which is very much related to what you're looking at in activity 4.4. Yes, ma'am. I've got them going at an angle, but because it's such a small angle, it doesn't really show up. Well. It may be better to do the, you're doing a sideways view. It may be better to show it straight down, because that way you could show it like a prism going through each of the interfaces. You're, you're, that's, that that, that's not bad, but you're at a funny projection. Probably the straight down view. I mean, this thing here. That's supposed to be the pencil. I don't know how to do it from straight down. Though. Um, I would. Okay. Um, let's see here. You probably want to draw this thing something like that's supposed to be an eye there. Something like that, except you may tilt this block. In fact, if you look at the effect, it's maximum when the block is tilted. So, um, well, the critical one is the one on the angle, clearly. So you, for sure you need that. And you want to explain this in terms of rays of light traveling in straight lines. What else do rays of light do? What do they do when they're passing through objects? You don't have any extra I do, actually. If you go down front, the um, cart with the uh, water bottle on it for my upside down eyes trick has got some protractors on it. Yes, ma'am. So, would this be straight? That's straight would be normal, right? Now, but when you look at the effect, here, let's see the, the thing. When you look at the effect, do you get much of an effect when it's straight on normal? That's where it's minimum. So you probably want it tilted to get the maximum effect. Uh, it kind of looks like the, the magician's trick where they cut the lady and, <laughs> you know, they saw her in half or saw a chunk of her. Yes. Um, Okay, can you show, tell, can you draw a normal at each of those interfaces and show how the bending works? Okay. Okay, some of you are doing some very beautiful three-dimensional drawings. Um, the critical part is to show how rays are traveling at the interface.
No, it doesn't need to be three-dimensional. You can do all this analysis in two dimensions. You have light coming in and striking this thing. Right? Then how does it bend? It's going to bend towards the normal. This is a straight line through here. But it's not going to take that. It's going to bend towards the normal. So it'll bend something like that. There's another normal there. It's going to pass through. If it were to go straight through, it would go straight through like that. But it's not going to go straight through. It's going to bend out. So it will be away from the normal. And in fact, what happens is light bends such as this part here. are parallel to each other. Parallel. So what's happened to the ray? What did you see? Did you see the pencil where you expected it to? Where was the image of the pencil? It was... It was sideways. The, the ray comes through parallel but pushed sideways. The things are pushed sideways by some kind of distance here. So when you look through this thing, all the light comes through and follows the path parallel to the way it went in, but it's pushed over to one side. It appears as if the ray gets displaced. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me darken up the room a little bit on this side. Look at the ray here. Here it's coming in. There's some reflected rays, we'll ignore those. Here it's coming in, here it's going out. The outbound ray is parallel to the inbound ray. They're both going in the same direction. But what happens here apparently? The ray is displaced sideways. That's the effect that you see. The pencil, the image of the pencil in the block is displaced sideways. And you can see the pencil above and below the block and then the image of it being shoved sideways. It looks almost like, you know, the old magician's trick where they cut the lady in half, right? Kind of saw the, saw the woman in half. Or it looks like somebody sawed a chunk out of it and pushed it sideways. That's what we're seeing here. And you need to be able to explain this in words. What's happening here in words? Take a second and try and explain it to your partner in words what has happened here. And then when you're brave enough, uh, perhaps you can explain it to me and to the rest of the group. Okay, so who can explain this in words? Some daring soul. Someone want to? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, oh. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I don't need that. What the heck? Um, Does it work? There you go. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> There's a button on it. Okay. Anyone want to add anything to that explanation? Yes, ma'am? Um, those, uh, the question is, why does it go in at a half and away at a third? What happens is that's just a pattern that you observe. Um, 
we have fancier mathematical formula that describe that, uh, the next step up would be to look at something called Snell's Law. And then beyond that, you'd look at more math and you'd call it Fermat's theorem, and then you'd look at more math and call it quantum electrodynamics. But ultimately, there's not really good answer. It's just a pattern in nature um, that we have observed and can replicate very reliably. Okay, the ultimate causes are really not very well understood, to be quite frank. Um, but nonetheless, it does go in, uh, it does emerge at a third and go in at a half, is I, I believe the uh, formula that you were given. Okay, it's just, it's just a perceived regularity in nature. And oftentimes you'll hear people dismiss it, like somebody will say very dismissively, oh, that's how nature works, which is a way of closing down the question. The question is a very valid question, and it's an open question. If you were to do a dissertation in physics, a PhD dissertation in physics, that would be a valid question to analyze for that. It's a very real, open, unanswered question. It's a problem that you could pursue. Okay, so it's by no means a trivial one. However, for now, we just say that it's a perceived regularity in nature and that we describe it. Okay, anyone else want to add some stuff to the explanation? I wouldn't have considered it quite complete. I think it's like 90% there, but there are a couple of minor details that are missing. I heard someone mumble something. I have a question. The line that comes from your eye to the pencil, is it the same as the line that goes from the pencil to your eye? Um, question up front here is a line moving from your eye to the pencil, is that the same as, uh, as a line moving from the pencil to the eye? A way to answer that would be, if you actually stuck a small mirror in the place of your eye, would you expect a ray of light to run back and forth on top of itself? Okay, if you sent it exactly straight back, would it lie on top of itself? What's the answer to that? Yeah, we do. We expect light to run back and forth. And that is also an extremely profound question, because light rays appear to run back and forth along identical paths in time. <laughs> 